Good evening, people of God. Good evening, YouTube. Um, I pray everybody's staying warm right now. It's it's cold right now here in Texas. So I know if it's cold in Texas, it's probably cold where you're at. <laughs> so I pray you're staying warm. But anyways, I wanted to start off with this verse, and it's in Psalms 146.3. It says, do not put your trust in princess, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that day, their plans come to nothing. Their plans come to nothing. This is the major problem. That you're idolizing people. There's... A lot of people in the body of Christ idolizing people, putting people before God, idolizing other things and putting them before God. You're putting your own pastor before God. You're putting a prophet before God. And this is the problem. This is the issue. When you idolize something, when you put something before the Lord, that is when we mess up. This is where we go wrong. And we see the consequences of it after. We see the consequences after. There's a lot of stuff going on in the body. Not just in the body, but every, all over. Um, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to talk about. But the problem here is idolizing. Idol worship. Idol worship. But praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus that Things are being exposed as we are seeing it unfold. We're seeing a lot of things being exposed in the body of Christ. Because the Lord says judgment starts in, in the house of the Lord. But we're also seeing a lot of exposure in Hollywood. We're seeing a lot of expo exposure everywhere else. It's not just in church. But the tour has the veil has been tore off. The Lord has tore the veil. But now we have the problem. See, this is a problem. People are idolizing their own pastor. People are idolizing uh, other people, YouTube, YouTube uh, prophets and YouTube preachers and all this stuff. They idolize them. They go to other conferences. Um, they get, you know, they want them to lay hands on them. They idolize these people. They see them as God instead of seeing God first. They see them as a God. And this is how we get into trouble. This is how we get hurt. This is how we get church hurt. You go to a church and your pastor lets you down or whoever lets you down in that church. And now you're hurt. Because what happened? You put your trust in man instead of God. You put your trust in man instead of, instead of God. And in Psalms 146, it says, do not put your trust in them. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that day, their plans come to nothing. Stop idolizing these people. Stop idolizing your own pastor. Stop idolizing. It doesn't matter what they do, how many miracles they perform. What do you think they're doing it? And they're doing it by the power of God. They're doing it in the name of God, in the name of the Lord. And even then, some of them are doing these fake miracles. That's why it's important to have discernment like never before in this time. In this time. Four years ago, the Lord said, I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm bringing exposure. But this was four years ago. I've been waiting on it. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, when is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? And I don't care if you're not excited about exposure. I am. I am. I'm excited that all their dirt is coming to the light. I'm excited that the Lord is stepping in to save his sheep. That he's stepping in to sh save his sheep. And a year ago, the Lord told me 
that um, to warn the shepherds, and I have it on my YouTube channel, to warn the shepherds. He says, daughter, warn my shepherds, warn them that I my wrath is coming for them if they do not get it right, if they do not repent. And God has given them a long time of grace, of uh, a, a period of grace, a period of, of um, a period to get it together. God is, God is, God is a merciful God, but he's also a God of wrath. If you know the Lord, he's a God of wrath too. So I made that video. I warned the shepherds and now we're here a year later. We're here and, uh, we see all this mess going on in the church. We see the horrific things that are going on in the church. Do y'all remember the book of Isaiah? I believe it's the book of Isaiah. Or is it the book? Let me see. I think it's the book of Isaiah. I think it's the book of Isaiah or Ezekiel. I'm sorry, guys. I always get those two mixed up. It's either the book. I think it's the book of Isaiah. But in the book of Isaiah, or is it? In the book of Isaiah or Ezekiel, um, the Lord shows a lot to him. The Lord shows a lot to him of the mess that was going on behind closed doors. Of the mess that was going on behind closed doors. People of God, exposure is here, like it or not. Defending, you're defending your, your pastor. You're defending them. And the Lord is exposing all the sickening, sickening wickedness that they have been doing for so long. So long. And God has been taking them out and taking them out and taking them out. That guy, Zacharias, never heard of him uh, until he passed. And then I was I was Googling him. He was one. He got caught doing a lot of mess, a lot of mess in the church. Eddie Long, another one. Never heard of him until he passed. And I looked. All, up all the stuff. I think this all happened before. I know with Eddie Long, I believe it was before I even became a Christian. But Eddie Long died of cancer. Zacharias, I don't know how he passed. I forgot. I don't even remember. Then you have Carlton Pearson. He died. Cancer. Got wiped out. TB Joshua and now um, all the mess that's going on that's coming out with TB Joshua and a lot of pastors and leaders are still on this man's side. Woe to you. Woe to you. Woe to you. TD Jakes is next. He is already being judged by the Lord. TD Jakes is next. Oh, there was another guy. See, this is what God was showing me when he told me to post a video, uh, uh, um, um, warning the shepherds. He said that he was going to take some of them out with death. And then the other ones, he was just going to take everything from them. Everything that, everything that they got off of filthy gain from their congregation by taking advantage of God's people. Flying in their little private jets, in their ten million dollar homes, um, living a lavish lifestyle, thinking that all the stuff that they do, they're not going to be judged. They're not going to be that God's not that God has His eyes closed. <clears throat> but God is giving them, showing them mercy this whole time. Even th this is how merciful God is. He gave this man a chance to repent all the way to his deathbed. This man could still talk. This man was still making new agey videos. And he died talking still about, about false doctrine. That's how merciful God is. That's how merciful God is. Now, the thing with TB Joshua, I never followed this man. I, I really don't. I knew about him, but I never followed him. 
Um, but uh, I know a lot of leaders did. There's some that have been, there's some that spoke out about it, like Isaiah Saldivar. I know he didn't follow him like that, but he spoke out about the documentary. And um, along with other leaders and stuff like that. And I, and I saw a video of this pastor saying, I believe, that's what he said, I believe that people got paid, that people got paid to say all these things. Well, I, if these people got paid, they had a lot to say and they, you know what? I would not even, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even have, uh, seen them as like, act, I mean, they were great actors, I guess they, 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 you know, they talked right in camera. Um, there was a lot of stuff they talked about, uh, they weren't stumbling with their words. They weren't, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I noticed. To me, they were being real, sincere. But these leaders that are uh, on de um, defending TB Joshua, saying all, all of those people got paid. Oh, and then Prophet Lovey said, Prophet Lovey said, it's a red flag to me. After this man died, they make a documentary. How, why, you know, he should be able to defend himself. These people are testifying of the horrific things that he did. And y'all are still on his side. Y'all are still defending this man. It is crazy to me. Crazy to me. But the people, see, this is what I, what I noticed when I was watching a little bit of the documentary, because I wanted to see what was going on. Um, these people idolized this man. That's where they went wrong. That's where they messed up. They idolized this man. See the problems we get ourselves into when we idolize a man. And the Lord says, put not your trust in man. Men, men, people of God, men can fail you all day long. They can let you down all day long. The one that never changes, the one that remains the same is God Almighty. He is the one you should run to. He's the one that you should put on a pedestal. He's the one. He's the one that gave you life. Not your pastor, not, not a prophet, none of that. They did not give you life. God gave you life. God gave you life. So that's what I know. That's the first thing. You idolizing this man. You're doing everything for this man. And he's leading you to him, not leading you to God. And this is the thing about some leaders. If they're leading you to them, they are. Do not fall into that. Do not fall into that. Matthew 24, 22 22 says, we're going to go there. Oh my goodness. There's so much to say, Lord, there is a lot. And I pray that the body of Christ, it continues. Like we should expose, God says, expose, expose darkness, expose them. And you know what? The times that God gave me the dream concerning low be the time God gave me the dream concerning, um, who else was it? Uh, it was Lovi. It was some other leaders that the Lord gave me. And I just wrote down the dream. But I didn't talk about it. But then I was hearing everybody. I was hearing the body of Christ talk about it. I said, yep, Lord. Yep, you're right. You're always right, Lord. You are always right. And sometimes we think, Lord, is it, you know, is it, is this just me making? Nope. It's the Holy Spirit. It's God showing you and exposing what is going on. We need to talk more about exposed darkness. And and I applaud the men and the women of God that are exposing darkness. Tiffany Montgomery, exposing darkness. Uh, Abendigo, exposing darkness. Um, Isaiah, exposing darkness. Um, all these men and women of God that are exposing darkness, continue to expose it. Continue to expose their wickedness and their darkness in the name of Jesus. So we're going to go to Matthew 24 
and read 22 through 26. It says, In those days had not if those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. At that time, if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Even the elect. See, I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you, there he is out of the wilderness, do not go out, do not go out, or here he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For a lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Guys, we don't want to be, we don't want to fall into that category of elect the elect, listen, the elect means chosen and selected ones. Those, God said, those will even be deceived. The chosen, the selected, that means the body. There's going to be some in that time, and we're seeing it now, that are being deceived by these false prophets. And what does it say? The prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive. And most of these Wicked prophets and wicked leaders are working in witchcraft. And you have these men of God and women of God talking about it. And we still. We don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear it. The Lord gave me a dream concerning Lovi a while back. And I have people to testify to this because I, I share my dreams with certain people. He was working in white magic. He had a wand in his hand with a white coat with gold trimming everywhere. And in the dream, there was a table of women on the right. This is a dream I had that I wrote down months ago. And my sister Ellie can testify. I shared this dream with her a while back. And on the right side, there was a table full of women. And he was running trying to run down this aisle do y'all know what they separate if y'all go ever go to the movies or if you go to not even to the movies um uh, to to the concerts concerts and stuff even at church they have these metal things that which with the ropes with the the black ropes to to um to separate the lines and stuff well he there was some but they were all like along each other like just in in a line Every time he would get to the fifth one, he would hold up his wand, get to the fifth one, and the, they would, every time he'd pass them, they would fall. Boom, boom, boom. He couldn't get past the fifth one, and he would return back to, to the starting line. And on the side, I saw the women sitting at the table, and they were being hypnotized. And you know, like in the, in the cartoons where you see that little thing the, in the eyes, it's like this? That's how they were. And I was like, whoa. Whoa. The Lord showed me who that man was. And you know what? I, I, I repent not speaking about it. I, reg I, I repent not speaking about it when he showed it to me. And I was listening to one of my old videos the other day. Because um, I wanted to hear what the Lord was saying in that video with the shepherds. And then with uh, other things uh, I was watching too. Um, just to kind of like go back to what I posted and I remember talking about certain leaders that he had exposed to me. And I said, I'm going to post videos. If God shows me somebody, I'm posting it. I'm telling it. And I, and I didn't, you know, I forgot all about that. But sometimes we don't want to expose. Sometimes we're like, should I even say anything about this person? I'm like, God, you showed me. I know, you know, I have the, I, I, you should have the discernment. You should, ha you should ask for discernment if you don't have it. And a lot of people in the body, don't have it. Don't have it. Because while some people are plotting this person, I already know. I'm like, mm -mm. no, these people ain't right. God has shown me these other people. And I'm like, they're not right. They're not right. So anyways, so he was hypnotizing these women. And I also had another dream with him with serpents around him. Serpents, just a bunch of serpents. But anyways, guys. We cannot let these false prophets working in witchcraft, working in divination, working 
not and not this working in a demonic spirit, not the spirit of God. Not the spirit of God. And I'm speaking on this because God had the only reason I'm saying these these men is because God had already spoken to me about them. I'm not going to get on here either and just talk and just throw names on and say, yeah, this guy, this guy. No, no, I'm confident. I'm confident of what God showed me. I'm very confident of what he showed me. But anyways, anyways, don't let them, don't let them fool you. Don't let their slick talk fool you. Don't let them twist the truth. Don't let, don't let how they twist the truth and make it into their own fool you guys. Don't, don't let them be, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. We do not want to be that in, in, in that category where we get deceived. And we're like, how did I not see it? Tell the Lord, Lord, take off any scales, blinders off my eyes. Of my spiritual eyes, I want to see exposed. This is one thing I pray. I said, expose to me, God, who is for you, who is who's against you. Because while the other person has no discernment, I've seen this. I've seen this. The other person, I already know because I the Lord had already shown me. And then this, you know, and then everybody else around you is clapping. Yeah, yeah. I love that guy. And I'm like. Hey, work out your own salvation. Work out. You need to pray that the Lord gives you discernment. Discernment. Because I'm going to tell you something. Me, I'm not going to fall into deception. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not. I, that's what I pray every day. Lord, I, I, I refuse to fall into any deception. God, keep me. That's my prayer. Keep me and show me. Because the moment he shows me something, I'm already. Eh. I don't care who you are. I have stopped following people on YouTube. Once the Lord shows me who it is, once he shows me what's going on. Once he shows me what's going I'm like, nope, not following them anymore. They're just people. I don't care. I'm not going to idolize man. I'm sorry. I will never idolize man. I don't care how long you've been pastoring. I always say that. I don't care how long you've been pastoring. I don't care what you call yourself. I don't care if you come and say you're a prophet, you're this, you're that. I will test you. I will test the spirit. And that's what we need to do. We need to test the spirit. I also wanted to read Psalms 10 and I will finish, finish up. I want to read Psalms 10. <clears throat> I was in prayer the other morning and I was like, Lord, I got always some, just speak God. What do you, what do you want to show me? And it had to do with. Psalms 110. I'm going to read it because Psalms 110. Okay. I'm going to read it and then I'm going to tell y'all what the, clearly what the, what I heard the Lord say. And y'all tell me. Crazy. It's crazy, 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 but I'm going to read it. It says, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. The Lord will extend your mighty scepter from Zion saying, rule in the midst of your enemies. Your troops will be willing on your day of battle. Wait a minute. What's it? Oh, it's Psalms 10. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm reading Psalms 110. Psalms 10. I think I even said Psalms 10, but I'm over here in one. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. That's not it. Okay. Sorry. It says, why do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? In his arrogance, in his arrogance, the wicked man hunts down the weak who are caught in the schemes he devises. He boasts about the cravings of his heart. He blesses the greedy and reviles the Lord. In his pride, the wicked man does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. His ways are always prosperous. Your laws are rejected by him. He sneers at all his enemies. He says to himself, nothing will ever shake me. Nothing will ever shake me. 
He swears no one will ever do me harm. His mouth is full of lies and threats. Trouble and evil are under his tongue. He lies in wait near the villages. From ambush, he murders the innocent. His eyes watch in secret for his victims. Like a lion in cover, he lies in wait. He lies in wait to catch the helpless. He catches the helpless and drags them off in the net. His victims are crushed. They collapse. They fall under his strength. He says to himself, God will never notice. He covers his face and never sees. Arise, Lord. Lift up your hand, O God. Do not forget the helpless. Why does the wicked man revile God? Why does he say to himself, he won't call me to account? But you, God, see the trouble of the afflicted. You consider their grief and take it into hand. The victims commit themselves to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked man. Call the evildoer to account for his wickedness. That would not otherwise be found out. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations will perish from his hand. You, Lord, hear the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them and you listen to their cry, defending the fatherless and the oppressed so that mere earthly mortals will never again strike terror. After I had finished that verse, the Lord said, T.D. Jakes, T.D. Jakes. He thinks I don't see what he's doing. He thinks he's going to get away with everything he's done in my name. And it goes back to the judgment of the shepherds. It goes back. It goes back to the warning of the shepherds. God has been warning you and warning you and warning you. Not just T.D. Jakes. A lot of them. Even what's his name? I remember I used to listen to him as a uh, before I became a Christian. Uh, I don't know these guys' names. Um, Redick, Redrick. I don't know. He has another. He has another church or whatever. Real good friends with T.D. Jakes. Him, T.D. Jakes. All these, all these, all these pastors, these leaders that idolize money, idolize power. They don't. They don't put God first. They don't put God first. They don't even put, they will not even die for the, for a sheep. They don't even bind up the, the, the wounded in their own church. This is sad, 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 sad. But what God is doing, what God is doing is removing them and bringing in new shepherds, shepherds that are going to take care of his flock. Like he showed me, like he was telling me a while back. So the purification is here. I did a video on that. The fire, the fire, God's fire is here. He's purifying. And I was telling sister Ellie the, uh, just today, I said, the, the, I said, exposure is part of the purification process. It's, it's, it's part of it. It has to be exposed. Wickedness has to be exposed. The darkness has to be exposed so that God can clean all the dross, remove the dross. He's cleansing his church. Remember, he said, I'm coming for my bride without blemish and without stain. He's coming for his bride without blemish and without stain. He's removing all the idols. Even if it's your own pastor, he's removing your pastor. He's removing everything that you idolize, everything we idolize. He's removing them. Them idols are coming down, guys. Are you going to go down with your idols? Are you going to go down defending these false prophets? Are you going to go down defending uh, these false leaders? Are you going to go down with them? I'm t they wouldn't go down with you. Go out and, and do something and, and then call your pastor and see if he's going to be there for you. There's not a lot of pastors like that. I thank God for our pastor, Brian Ayala at Extreme Harvest. That man's a true man of God. And I thank God that we are under his leadership. But do I idolize, do I put him on a pedestal? Do I, no, not before God. Mm -mm. No. I respect him. I love our pastor. We pray for our pastor. 
we give we keep him lifted but would i ever put him before the lord no even though he's a great mighty man of god no i would not so we got to ask ourselves are you god's friend or are you his enemy because these pastors that are going down are god's enemies and the and whoever i'm going to tell you this whoever is an enemy of god is my enemy i don't care what you call yourself pastor leader whatever prophet to the fifth power i don't care as kevin ewing says call yourself prophet to the 50th power i don't care mm -mm. no 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 i do not care If you are God's enemy, you are automatically my enemy. If you are coming against God, you're you're my enemy. That's the way I see you. I don't see you as my brother or sister. I see you as my enemy. These men that are getting exposed, that are doing the worst in the church of God that's supposed to be his. I'm telling you right now, that is not God's church. He has nothing to do with that mess. You are my enemy. You are my enemy. People of God, we got to ask ourselves. We got we got to ask not ourselves, we got to ask the Lord. God, unmask. This is what I pray. Unmask anybody that is not for you. Unmask them. Show them to me, expose them to me, but you are too afraid to ask the Lord to show the show them, to expose them. Because it could be your own pastor, your own leader, and you refuse to stop following them. Because you idolize them. But God's wrath is here already, guys. His wrath is here against the shepherds. His wrath is here against the shepherds. And it's time for us to step up. I was talking to my sister Alana the other day. And she was sharing a dream with me. And I heard the word step up for her. But also for the body. And I thank you pastors and leaders and, and prophets and, and men and women of God. You don't even have to be a leader. Men and, men and women of God that are exposing this mess. That are exposing this darkness with, with no shame. With no fear. Because like I said, either you're for God or you're against God. That's it. There's no in the middle. There's no, okay, I th I, I, I'm a little, I, 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 I'm a friend of God, but not really, but okay, sometimes, no, you're either a friend of God or you're not. And if you're not his friend, you're not my friend either. You are not my friend. You become my enemy. God wants us to stand up for the truth. God is the truth. He wants us to stand up for it. He wants us to stand up. I'm going to read Isaiah, and I'm going to finish it off with this. Isaiah. Isaiah well, chapter 1, verse 16. <clears throat> 16 through 17. And it, it says, Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. This is what God is telling us to do. Seek justice. Learn to do what's right. Take up the cause of the fatherless and please the case of the widow. Plead the case of the widow. The Lord says do what is right. Fight for those that can't fight for themselves. Fight for these victims. Fight for the ones that cannot fight. Fight for them. That's why it's important to have a true shepherd leading his, leading the flock of God, leading the flock. Cause he will die for his sheep. He will, he will do whatever it takes for his sheep. But you have pastors like TD Jakes that just take, 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 pervert, defile the church of God, defile, pervert, take from his congregation. Mislead the sheep. Leave them wounded. Leave them oppressed. Scatter them. 
You have these pastors and leaders like Kenneth Copeland. You have these pastors and leaders like Jen, um, Joe Osteen. Joyce Myers. T.D. Jakes. All these guys. Oh, and there's more. There's more. And the sad thing is these guys have mega churches. They are leading thousands and thousands and thousands into destruction, into the wrong path. And I pray that y'all repent. I'm glad that these there's men with boldness like our pastor, men with boldness like other pastors that are calling this mess out, talking about it, not shutting up about it. And people say, oh, you should be careful how you talk. They are working in witchcraft. There's a difference. They're working in witchcraft. They're working in divination. They're working in high level witchcraft. They are God's enemy. They are God's enemy. Even God rejected Saul. You don't think he's rejected them already? But you're accepting them. But God's already rejected them. God's already, his wrath is already here for them. And you're still defending them. You're still defending their disgusting, wicked things that they're doing with these little boys, raping little boys, raping women, making them have abortions, running sex rings under their church. And these people are testifying. There is proof and they're, they're testifying against this. And you are still not believing it. Daniel Adams saying these people got paid. Really? All of them got paid. Well, they're good actors. They're good actresses. Let me tell you that. Because there was a lot of information they spoke on and they didn't forget anything. They weren't stuttering. They, were, they weren't stuttering. I know if I was lying, which if I was lying and somebody paid me to do say a lie, I'd be stuttering all over the place. I'm not good with lying. I'd be stuttering everywhere. I'd be, you would forget things. Man, it's a shame. It's a shame. Step up for the truth, guys. Fight for the innocent. God wants us to stand for truth. God fights for the innocent. He wants us to be like him. We should fight for the innocent. Instead of going against, instead of dismissing them, the victims, dismissing them and just still, oh, don't talk about that pastor. Don't put your mouth on that pastor. Don't put your mouth on this person. I am going to put my mouth on that person. They're God's enemies. I will put my mouth on the person, especially if God has already revealed it to me a long time ago. I will. I will. I'm going to speak on what God has already shown me. I'm not just speaking on what everybody's speaking about. I'm speaking on what God had already shown me. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a bad time. A bad time for these for these uh, false teachers, false leaders, especially the shepherds. That the, that's what the Lord said. The shepherds. The shepherds. He's going to take them out with the sword. He's going to take them out with death. He's going to take them off from their little, their little throne that they have built. These little, these pastors, they built their own little throne to sit on. And everybody's kissing their feet. Everybody's just serving them like they're God, like it's God. Y'all need to repent. Y'all need to repent. Y'all are under witchcraft. Y'all are under witchcraft manipulation and control. That's all I'm going to say. Repent, repent, repent. And people of God continue to step up. Continue to fight for the truth. Continue to fight for the innocent. Continue. Continue to expose darkness. Expose it. If the Lord shows you something, talk about it. Expose it. This is the, this is the season where we should not... Uh, just keep things to ourselves anymore that the Lord shows us. He shows us for a reason. We need to speak on it. Speak on it. Not be afraid. It's time to step it up in the body. Time to step it up. We need to fight for the truth. Fight for the truth, people of God. All right, people of God, I'm out. Shalom, shalom.